So I'll be talking about the role of radiation therapy in mesothelioma and more specifically how it integrates with immunotherapy. We don't have a lot of data yet, but it is a very rapidly emerging field. And so I broke down my presentation first to talk about the different radiation techniques that are available right now. A lot of time is spent and a lot of experience has been built around the technique targeting the entire pleura, which is really the area at risk in pleural mesothelioma, and is technologically extremely challenging. And so we, as well as a group in Italy, have developed a technique that is able to do that and spare the underlying lung um, because the lung is a radiosensitive organ and can only take so much radiation before we cause excessive toxicity. And so technologically, that is now possible that we can deliver that safely. And um, that's been demonstrated in multiple phase two trials and is currently under investigation in a cooperative group phase three trial in, the, in North America. And the Italian group has also done a single institution phase three trial, even showing a um, very promising survival benefit um, that you know needs to be substantiated and validated um, in a multi-center trial. So um, certainly a technique that is up and rising, it's been coming along in the last 10, 15 years, can at this point only be done in experienced hands because it's still a challenging treatment to put patients through and to also manage them in terms of after effects. But at least it's technologically possible in experienced centers. Now, that technique has not been combined with immunotherapy yet. There is a SWOG trial that is um, uh, led by ENSO at MD Anderson, where um, immunotherapy is given sequentially to the radiation as well as chemotherapy and surgery. Um, so that will be one of the first trials to look at that. Um, we are looking at combining it directly with, the, with this type of radiation, which, by the way, we call imprint. Um, it's intensity modulated plural radiation therapy. And so we are launching a phase one study to combine immunotherapy with this technique in patients that cannot have surgery. So that's the first direct combination of immunotherapy with this type of radiation. On the other hand, there are many other radiation techniques that are actually in some ways more commonly employed um, because it's quite common that radiation therapy is used for palliative purposes. And many patients are not candidates for this radiation that targets the entire pleura because it's too tough. They may be too frail for it, or it may be too risky, or it may be technologically not possible because of how extensive the disease is. And so very commonly, we actually offer radiation to areas that are causing symptoms, really, for pain control, to improve quality of life, for any areas where the tumor is pressing on nearby organs and causing airway compression or pressing on blood vessels, pressing on nerves. And that's where radiation can be very helpful and is standardly employed. And so in that setting, of course, immunotherapy is playing also an increased role. Like in many disease sites, immunotherapy has made its inroads in the more advanced setting. So they were at first single agent trials, and now there was just in January published a um, dual checkpoint inhibition trial with ipilimumab and nivolumab by Paul Bass. And that showed actually a survival benefit compared to regular conventional chemotherapy. So we only expect that it, the role of immune therapy will continue to expand. And so we need to learn how to safely combine it with palliative radiation therapy. And so we've done a trial looking at abelumab and stereotactic radiation, and that seemed to be safe. Um, and that was published earlier this year at the World Lung Cancer Conference. Um, and um, in the UK, there's a similar trial ongoing, I believe, with pembrolizumab, so another anti-PD-L1 you know, drug. And so we're beginning to explore that combination and um, see whether it is safe. It seems to be, and in some ways it's anticipated to be, because from other disease sites, we have some experience combining radiation and immunotherapy, um, even in the thorax, um, but not specifically for mesothelioma that we're just beginning to do those trials. And then lastly, maybe proton therapy or some really advanced modern radiation technologies can of course be combined. There's nothing um, fundamentally different in terms of the interaction that we expect between that type of radiation therapy and immunotherapy. Um, but it is a, a different way of delivering radiation that is 
um, potentially able to avoid more normal organs nearby. It all depends on the geometry, the anat anatomy, and the physics behind it. But it is another tool in the box that we have to combine with immunotherapy.